Hey, Stephen Yanni here doing the Junkyard Crawl with some help from our friends at High Octane Classics in Auburn, Mass. Thank you very much. Uh, I often joke around about French cars saying, P.U. Joe, or this Renault way I'll ever own another Renault Le Car, which I had in high school, which is why I'm still single. But with that said, we have to remember that Peugeot, which made this 1974-04, was one of the world's first car makers, first building a car in 1889, puttering around France, a little weird cycle car kind of a thing. But you know, Peugeot has really been a major player on the global scene. And these 404s were made between 1960 and 1970. 2.8 million of these things were made worldwide. And for a very brief period, they were imported to the United States. Now, the 404 is Peugeot's mid-sized car. Car. They actually had small, medium, and large cars in Europe, but largely these are the ones we got here. But this thing was certainly originally bought by somebody who was kind of forward thinking. When they bought it, they removed the 404 emblem and put an original SCCA sticker underneath it and then reapplied the emblem. That's the SCCA Sports Car Club of America sticker right there. Kind of cool. Maybe a college professor or a sports car fan or something like that. And the thing of it is, the price on this thing new was $2,699. The same price could have got you a Chevy Biscayne six-cylinder four-door. Much bigger car, but this is maybe a little more imaginative car. So this fellow here was definitely a forward thinker, or sports car guy. Under the hood, what have we got? Okay, well these are rear wheel drive. You know a lot of French cars are front drive, but this is not. This is a 45 degree slant to that four cylinder Hemi. And yeah, just like a 426 or a 392, the plugs go down the middle, dual rocker shafts. And again, remember, the Hemi combustion chamber was first seen in Europe before Chrysler adopted it in 51. You'd see them in the 20s and 30s on foreign cars from, from Europe, frankly. So this is a slant four rear wheel drive. This has an automatic, we'll get to that in a second. Now Peugeot did make their own engines and pretty much everything else except the transmissions were made by ZF, a German company. Uh, it's crazy to see this. The front suspension on this thing is coil spring and the rust is so incredible on this thing that the spring tower has rotted away and there's the spring. This technically is a McPherson strut, gotta say. The strut with the spring and the shock inside, that is uh, a McPherson strut on the front of this thing. We didn't have McPherson struts in the States on an American car till I believe the 78 Ford Fairmont. So, you know, kind of a, an advanced car for its day and uh, of course in Europe. Now this one is interesting, it's very pure. The original one barrel carburetor is still here with a very elaborate air cleaner. It's got a silencing chamber, a little zip tube on the front to grab air from the front of the car for cooler, denser charge. This is a vacuum canister, a supplemental canister, probably there to run some sort of vacuum operated um, things. This does not have vacuum suspension, so I'm not really sure. Oh, the power brakes. Here is the master cylinder's booster, that thing right there. So the power brakes were uh, supplemented by this vacuum. That's the booster, crazy stuff. The engine bay is so compact in this thing that unlike an American car where the booster's here sticking out, they packed it vertically here on this bizarre little French creation. And we see here the factory fill Peugeot. SO was the uh, preferred petroleum supplier for the PU Joe, or Peugeot, excuse me. Uh, and a nifty little critter in some ways, you know, I don't know. I wouldn't need to restore something like this, but I wouldn't mind a rust free example, which is not what we have here. But as we make our way down the side, we can see some just weird French stuff. And the French were known for just really eccentric style and design. The hubcaps are held on with a center bolt, whereas here in the States, it'd be held on by clips or tabs. I mean, that's never gonna come off. Drum brake behind there, big iron drum. Uh, no aluminum drums on this one. Certain French cars, or Italian cars, excuse me, would have aluminum drums um, like the uh, Fiat 1100, but again, iron drums on this one here. Factory sunroof, not an add-on, so that speaks to this car's uh, you know, price. Again, this would have been a $2,600 car when it was new. Same price as a full-size Biscayne, but this would slide inside, so nicely done. That's not an add-on at the dealer level. And here we see four hard points baked into the roof for the optional factory roof rack. Remove the uh, set screw in the middle and then put the rack down, screw it into these tabs. But again, this is born for a roof rack, which is something seen on a lot of French cars because frankly, to travel on a picnic or something like that, there's some room in the trunk, but largely to uh, make the most of it, put it on the roof. And here at the back, more of that weird, weird wheel stuff. Three lug nuts, again, a very French thing. 
Uh, I always say no real car has three lug nuts, and I should know. I own a smart car which has three lug nuts, but there it is right there. Stock, they're stamped steel wheels, and you got to say even the French were not immune from Detroit's tail fin buzz, and here we have here a very distinctive tail fin. In fact, this tail light effect looks a lot like the 61 Lincoln Continental, but let's keep in mind this car came out in 1960, right around the same time. This car was sold originally at Transatlantic Motors in Stamford, Connecticut to some forward-thinking college professor, and Transamerican Motors, I believe, Believe they also sold Ferraris and other import cars. Kind of cool. On the back, uh, Automatique. Again, a reference to that ZF German supplied automatic transmission. This is Road and Track Magazine's Road Test Annual for 1962. And of course, the Jag E Type. The opposite polar would be a Peugeot 404. But here's what they had to say about it they liked it. It says here, a good, honest product will always sell if given half a chance. Of course, the total registrations for Peugeot, Peugeot are not large by Detroit standards, uh, uh, nor is Peugeot's annual production rate of just over 200,000 vehicles. Down here it says here, the cruising speed can be almost anything you like. A steady 80 miles per hour is very comfortable and still a good 10 mile per hour below the true maximum. Uh, not too shabby. They do go on to the next page here, again, the 404. They say here is the Peugeot beat Pontiac to the punch by being first with a 45 degree slant four. That's true. Pontiac Tempest came out in 1962, I believe, with the slant four. These came out in 60 with the slant four. Of course, a very different engine. Uh, calculated data here, we have fuel consumption, performance, top speed, 88, uh, zero to 60. What do we have here? Uh, yeah, zero to 60 in, oh my God, 19.4 seconds, quarter mile 21.5, it's 63. So not a fireball, but again, this was probably bought new by somebody from Connecticut who had forward thinking in his mind, was an SCCA fanatic, maybe had a Cobra he ran on the weekends, who can say? But instead of paying uh, 26 dollars for a Chevy Biscayne, like everybody else, he paid that same money and bought this 404 Automatique Peugeot 404. And I say there's uh, no way I'll ever have a French car again. Kidding. Uh, but again, that's the story of how Peugeot made early inroads into the U.S. market. They're still trying to break in, frankly. Peugeot never really, I don't know, they did some stuff in the late 70s, the 504s, et cetera, et cetera, interesting cars. But uh, they're still, I think, waiting to come into the States. You know, we'll see what happens in the future. But with that said, they're huge in Europe. Billions of these things have been built over the years. So if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel and come back tomorrow for more Junkyard Crawl.